Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I'm in my garden today, deadheading roses, and boy do I have a lot of roses to deadhead. Before I go any further, I guess I should explain what deadheading is and what it's for, and I'm gonna show you how to do it on your different kinds of roses. So deadheading is a basic pruning technique, very easy and not very heavy. You don't have to go way down on the rose. It's not gonna be a heavy prune that your plant is gonna take a long time to recover from. It's just to fulfill a couple of basic functions. The first one is to tidy up your rose, to get these unsightly spent blooms off of your rose. And the second thing is that it's going to encourage your rose to go back into bloom sooner, which I guess is a good thing. And it can be as simple, I'm not gonna say this is the only way to do it, but it can be as simple as just grabbing the stem and twisting it off. That's the basics of deadheading. I'm gonna show you better technique, more elegant technique, but this does the job. This is tidier than it was before. And if you look at the bottom of this spent flower, you're gonna see that what it's trying to do is form a hip. That's the seed pod of the roses. And if it forms that hip, or if it goes on towards forming that hip, it's gonna send hormonal signals to the plant that says, send your energy here, I want to use it for seed development, which means that your plant isn't gonna go back into flower quite so soon. So it, by just by nipping it off like that, just as simple as that, I've done two things. I've made the rose look a little better and I've speeded it back along towards blooming again. So I wanna show you how to do it proper with a pair of pruners, actually, because it is better to do it that way. And uh, I'm gonna also, towards the end of the video here, I'm gonna talk about uh, deadheading and staging perennials because I think it bears a spot in the same discussion. The rose I'm demonstrating on here is named Polka. It's a climbing rose. You can see it has a completely spent flower here, and this one here is starting to ball up and fall apart. So it start, it's, it's well past its prime. Ooh, gave it a little shake, it came apart. This is what it looks like when it's fresh. That's Polka, uh, nice ruffled edges of the petals, gorgeous apricot color. So I love this plant in my garden, but I wanna show you how to deadhead that. and. I'm gonna do it with a clean, sharp pair of pruners. I mentioned before the importance of working with clean, sharp pruners. You don't wanna spread diseases around your garden, so spray down your pruners before you get going. Make sure they're sharp so they make a clean cut. That's the main advantage as to going around and nipping it off by hand. Not only is it a lot more work when you're dealing with a cluster flowering rose to be nipping off on the edge, but by using a pruner, you can actually choose where your cut goes and you can choose and you can get that clean cut that I was looking for. So where would I want to prune this? The answer is it's a little bit up to me how low or far down I want to go on the stem, but there are some rules of thumb about this. So if you look on the stem here, I'm gonna show you that this leaf that's coming out the side of the stem has one, two, three leaflets. And this one here as well has one, two, three leaflets. This one down here, and I'm going to pull it off, but mark where I've taken it from, has one, two, three, four, five leaflets. That's an indication that it's far back enough on the rows that it's back into vegetative growth. And that's where the rose is most likely to pick up and put up a new shoot and, uh, and start flowering again from. Up here may do so, but this is the safest spot in terms of the uh, hormonal balance of the rose. So from there, that's the spot where I had the five leaf leaflet. I just took a cut above the node. How far above the node? In this case, I went about a half inch above the node. Now, I can already hear people yelling at their screens. They say, you should have cut it on an angle, or this should be an outward facing bud. I've explained before in one of my other videos, I don't pay a lot of attention to those rules. Uh, doing it on an angle just adds complication for what I see as no additional benefit. And outward, inward facing bud, I don't go for that. The rose is probably gonna shoot in multiple places below this. It's gonna send uh, growth up in multiple directions and I don't get that much control over it. So I go for the natural approach, let it grow in a different direction. Deadheading a cluster flowering rose is just about the same. So you can see here that I'm treating this whole flower head as if it's one flower. So I'm just gonna follow it back 
to where it all joins the main stem there and then count down until I see a five leaf leaflet or better yet in this case I can see that the rose has already decided to shoot. So I'm going to just prune directly above that brand new shoot. The whole flower head goes away and I have this new growth here ready to come up and bring new flowers without the focus of the rose being on ripening all of those rose hips. The same principles of deadheading and staging apply to many other plants besides roses. In this case, I'm in the perennials and I have my salvia behind me, I have this astrantia, and they're both starting to look a little worse for the wear. On my salvia here, you can see from the flower spike, it's just got a little bit of color, a little bit of flowers left on the end here, and then it's done and then it will pause and try to ripen the seeds. And in the meantime, you're without colorful flowers in your garden. So something you can do is you can preempt it here. You can do a pruning where you either just take off the very most spent of the flowers and you leave the side laterals to start blooming, or you can be even more aggressive and take off right down low, six inches from the ground, eight inches from the ground, take off the whole spike and see if you can get it to bloom all at once again. I really, really encourage you to experiment with this. Same thing with this astrantia. I can just take off the flower spike, low down in the mound, and I will get new flowers on that relatively shortly. This leads me to my next topic, which is staging. And there's no rule that says that you can't start cutting back your flowers before they're spent. Now, some people are gonna say, well, what a shame. Why would you cut down flowers before they're spent in your garden? I will show you on my Anis hyssop, which is just a few feet to my right here. I'm just going to reposition the camera. Okay, what you see on this is it's actually just entering its bloom period. It does have a few mature blooms on it, but lots and lots of little blooms are coming. So this is relatively early in its bloom cycle, and you might ask, why am I so crazy as to consider staging it right now? The answer for me, and it's very personal right now, is that I have an event coming up in the, my garden in about a month. And if I let this run its natural course, by the beginning of August, it will be brown and bereft of flowers, and that's not the way I want to present it. But if I preemptively cut it now, it has plenty of time to recover, and I should see blooms again in the four to five weeks that it's gonna take before that event. So I may not do the entire thing, but if I stage it low right now, at least in part, I should have some blooms for that later time in the season. It wouldn't be a bad idea in any case to stage half of a patch like this that you don't get all your blooms at once and then have nothing. At least if you stage some in advance, you'll have some blooms for later. Well, that should pretty much cover it on the topic of deadheading. Just remember one last thing that this obviously only works on roses that begin as rebloomers. So if you have old garden roses or one time blooming ramblers or species roses, the deadheading will provide very little benefit except maybe as a cleanup to the rose. Um, I hope I've covered it to your satisfaction. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below the video. I'll see if I can help. Thank you again for watching.